Welcome to my first State of the University address. I have now been at Pace for three semesters. I have had time to get to know this university, to meet so many of our students, faculty, and staff, to learn about our history and our legacy. I have talked with and listened to so many of you in both formal and informal settings, and yet I also know that we in the administration must do more to communicate with everyone in the university community. That is why I'm here today to lay out my vision for the future of Pace University. We see many opportunities ahead of us and we will embrace them. We see some challenges too and we will confront them. I want to outline our plans and I want to make clear that we need your input and your help. The trustees, the provosts, the deans, everyone on our leadership team, we know that we must all work together to build our university's future. Most important, I want to assure you that despite the hard work we still must do, the state of Pace University is strong and it is getting stronger. This university has a vital mission. We create opportunities for students from all backgrounds. Through our instructional programs, our academic research, and our public service, we educate people, we empower them, and we transform their lives. That is what we've done for more than 100 years, and everything we're doing now is to ensure that we'll be able to do that for at least another 100 more. A symbol of our commitment is the remarkable transformation of One Pace Plaza and 41 Park Row. Everyone has seen the who has seen the new spaces loves them. If you haven't seen them, please come visit. We've added state-of-the-art academic facilities and beautiful student and faculty spaces. We tore down concrete walls and replaced them with glass. We opened Pace up to New York City. Together with the transformation of this campus that was completed only a few years ago, this work symbolizes our investment in our students, our faculty and staff, and a commitment to our strong future because there is much more to come. Here is our vision for this university. We want PACE to be known by the world by the way we know it. We want us to be known as the best place in this country for a world-class, hands-on, skills-based education grounded in the liberal arts. That is our heritage, our DNA. It is what we do. Students come to PACE to get a first-rate education in the country's most important metropolitan area. They come to us to get a great first job that will start them on what will be a stellar career. They follow the PACE path, or at the law school, the path to practice. These paths work. Our students are well prepared, not only for a first job, but for a lifetime. Our career services office reports that 87% of our undergraduates and 93% of our master's graduates were employed, continuing their education, or doing volunteer or military service six months after graduation. For both undergrads and master's graduates, employment rates were 10% higher than national averages. And at the law school, 92% of our graduates were employed 10 months after graduation. That is the best placement rate among our peer group in the New York metropolitan area. This is all part of why Pace is ranked the number one private four-year college in the country for driving upward economic mobility. That is, we are number one in taking students from lower income families and launching them into high earning careers we will keep doing this important work. We will keep creating opportunities for hardworking, ambitious students, regardless of their economic background. That is our meaning of opportunitas. At the same time, the reality is today that we're facing headwinds. These headwinds are not unique to Pace University, but they are real. Across the country, higher education institutions are facing financial pressure. Our costs keep going up 
but we know that we must keep college affordable for our students. The demands on colleges and universities are changing. Students are no longer or even primarily 18 to 22 year olds seeking a four year residential experience. Students want degrees faster. They want classes on schedules that work for them. They want the flexibility to learn in person or online or through a hybrid combination of the two. In the Northeast, we are facing the demographic reality that America's population is shifting and there are fewer people of traditional college age in the region. It has also become more difficult to attract international students, although we are doing better on that front than most colleges and universities. PACE will thrive, but for that to happen, we cannot simply afford to continue to do what we have been doing. So how do we move forward? We need a three-part plan. First, we must continue to stabilize our finances. Second, we must prioritize our academic programs. And third, we must continue to build our culture of student success. These three parts are connected and they involve every single person here. We need to move past thinking about schools, campuses, populations in isolation. For PACE to succeed, we all must work together to benefit the entire institution. We are at our best when we are one PACE, and we will succeed when we are one strong PACE. First, let's talk about student success because that is so fundamental. The most important thing we can do to help PACE move forward is to make sure our students succeed in their classes and progress to graduation. This sounds simple, it really matters. Greater student success drives progress in many ways. It means we are giving students even better educations. When students succeed and return each year, it means needed revenue. And better student success metrics mean better rankings, which makes PACE more desirable and our degrees more valuable. But student success is most important because this is what we do. This is why we're here. It is our mission. And that is why student success must be everyone's job. PACE's hardworking, ambitious students are why I wanted to be part of this amazing community. We must make sure that we are serving them as well as we can. That is why our provost has been laser focused since her arrival on student success. Together with the deans, she and I have set ambitious five-year goals for first to second year retention, graduation within six years, and transfer retention. For this academic year, our first to second year retention rate was nearly 80%. It was the second year of that record high. We're aiming to get, to it, get it to at least 85%. Our four-year graduation rate reached a record high of about 46% with last year's class, but our six-year graduation rates have been stuck in the mid-50s for some time. We are aiming to get the six-year rate to at least 70%. And while our transfer retention rates have increased over the last decade, from the upper 70s to the low 80s, we are aiming to get that number up to 87%. These are ambitious goals. They are achievable goals. They will make a real difference for our students and for the university. So how will we get there? We are reconfiguring programs and removing roadblocks that keep students from getting the help they need and faculty and staff from knowing which students need the help. We have launched a task force charged with overhauling our advising program. We have hired a new assistant vice president for the Office of Student Assistance. He has the mandate to improve the ways in which that office works to support students, faculty, and staff. I'm very pleased to report that wait times for appointments at OSA, which last year could run to a few hours, now average 18 minutes. We are also making real efforts to be more responsive to the needs of non-traditional students. Transfer students, part-time students, older students, commuter students, student veterans. 
To be one strong case, we must make sure that all our students feel that they are fully part of the university community. They need to know that we are committed to supporting them. We are in the process of hiring a senior level chief diversity officer to underscore how important diversity in all its forms is to this university. Diversity and, in and inclusion are integral to our mission and our heritage. This leader will help us nurture a better, more inclusive environment and help us recruit and retain the best and most diverse students, faculty, and staff. Embracing everybody in our community is another way we will work as one strong case. How do we support all our students? We need our faculty to encourage students to come to their office hours, to direct students to the learning centers, counseling services, or other resources, to take care of important tasks like filing grades on time. So many of you do such wonderful work, and that is why Pace students are as successful as they are. But we must make sure that all our faculty are working at that high level. Staff, we need your help too. The I Make It Happen Service Standards Initiative demonstrates the role our administrative staff plays in student success by emphasizing the principles of accessibility, respectfulness, accountability, professionalism, and proactivity, you not only make it happen, you make a real difference. When you work with students to help them plan their courses, clear their holds, get that financial aid, you help those students succeed. And students, this is ultimately up to you. We will all do everything we can to help you succeed. But the bottom line is that you must do the work. You need to be engaged participants in your education. The PACE Path is a wonderful program. Take advantage of it. Set goals, make a plan to achieve them, and then do the work to get there. Engage your professors. Go to their office hours. Find a great internship or two or three or four. Join clubs. Do research. Do your homework. And work with peer mentors because we know other students make a real difference too. Please eat, sleep, manage your time, and when you need help, ask for it. You are here, students, because we want you to succeed and we know you can succeed. Together, as one pace, we will make that happen. The second prong, academic program prioritization, is also about student success. Starting with the Pleasantville campus and moving to New York City later this year, the provost is leading a group taking a hard look at our academic programs. We are analyzing what is working and what is not. We will prioritize our resources on programs that students want, programs that they succeed in, and programs that prepare them for the jobs of tomorrow. That will mean some strategic changes as we focus resources where they can help us most succeed. But it also means new opportunities. In the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, creative arts programs are growing rapidly. So we're creating state-of-the-art production and exhibition facilities on both campuses, including a new performance space for Pace Performing Arts on Greenwich Street in New York. Just a few days ago, a new PhD in clinical psychology with a health emphasis was approved by the state. We are expanding our environmental programs and developing powerful partnerships in both Westchester and New York City. Dyson has also worked uh, with the Gilder Lehrman Institute to launch a new online Masters in American History geared toward K-12 teachers. It's a wonderful model for how we can think about partnerships, online education, and new markets. The College of Health Professions is moving with the marketplace, launching new master's programs in nutrition and dietetics and communication sciences and disorders. We are also developing a program in health information technology and a, most, a multidisciplinary master's in public health. We're seeing enormous demand for a new master's in occupational therapy. 
CHP's student body is growing rapidly, just as the demand for health professionals is growing too. The Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems has seen huge growth over the last five years as it too adjusts to meet the needs of today's employers. The three-year-old Applied Data and Networking Sciences Lab gives our students hands-on experiences working on big data, networking, and cybersecurity. We have launched a new course on design thinking. Today, tech employers know they can come to Seidenberg to find ambitious, well-trained graduates. The Lubin School of Business is revising its MBA program to make it faster and more flexible as the marketplace now demands. We're also adding new bachelor's and master's programs in data analytics, digital marketing, and other areas. Today, Lubin's fastest growing undergraduate major is in arts and entertainment management. And we are also now adding a master's in arts and entertainment management. Lubin is the oldest school at Pace, and we are reinventing it for today's world. The School of Education is determined to stand out from its peers by offering distinctive program. Pace educates global-minded teachers, something so important in today's diverse and globalized world. We are designing multi multiple certificate programs, like the one in literacy and teaching English to people who speak other languages and another in literacy and special education. We are exploring new markets, training teachers in other countries, and we are creating a minor in education for those whose jobs will have an educational component, like working in human resources or museums. At the Elizabeth Howe School of Law, we are also connecting with Pace's traditional mission of opportunity. We're making the law school more accessible with a new expanded part-time option we are sending students into the community through programs like our Immigration Justice Clinic. At a time when people are excited about going to law school again because they want to stand up for what they believe in, our programs in social and environmental justice are paying off. Our application numbers are up significantly this year. At the law school and across the university, we are building new collaborative interdisciplinary programs. We are taking advantage of the wide-ranging expertise that exists in all our schools. We are therefore preparing students for careers in a flexible, integrated world. We are also putting a major focus on online and continuing education. This area can and should be a significant revenue generator for, the uni for this university. But more than that, it is simply how many students choose to learn today. Nationally, about a quarter of graduate students are enrolled exclusively in online courses. For undergraduates, especially non-traditional students with busy schedules, online and hybrid programs provide the chance to stay on time and on track for a degree. And continuing education students seek online courses to earn credentials from trusted names. The good news is that the vast majority of online students are still regional, which means that we have an opportunity to leverage our brand in this, the New York metropolitan market. And we have a new associate vice president who is building an ambitious plan to do just that. Online education provides an opportunity that we must embrace. But we must also make sure that we pursue it in a way that lives up to our academic standards and supports our students and faculty in making that transition to online instruction. Online education will be a big part of PACE's future. On top of that, and across the university, we are exploring partnerships wherever they make sense whether with corporations, government, nonprofits, or other educational institutions. In the last 18 months, we've been able to form new relationships with Gilder Lehrman, with community colleges, with our neighbors like Kendall on Hudson in Westchester and Trinity Church in Manhattan. And we're pursuing many other partnerships opportunities wherever they can benefit PACE. Finally, our vision for One Strong PACE 
includes continued support for our faculty members and vicious research agendas. That is part of our mission too, even more so when that research creates opportunities for our students to collaborate and gain that real world experience. This kind of academic innovation will allow us to do new things and educate today's students. It is not just necessary, it is exciting. It is how PACE will thrive for the next 100 years and beyond. Now to do all of this, we must be mindful of our finances. The three prongs of this plan are interrelated. Financial stability allows us to priority, prioritize our academic programs and succeed for our students. And student success and program prioritization will help us maintain financial stability. As you know, we have worked hard to control costs. We looked at employee benefits last year. That process allowed us to get a better understanding of what's important to our colleagues. And it ultimately gave us an opportunity to negotiate much better terms. Across the university, we are asking people to work more efficiently and more collaboratively. We are all dedicated to this institution, many of you for many, many years. And it is time for us to do what it takes for this institution to thrive. The unavoidable truth is that the changing world requires us to change how we think and how we work. We are cutting back on outside consultants. We are making big strides in increasing energy efficiency. We are working to cut back on administrative duplication among the campuses. One pace, one strong pace, means working together to prioritize our mission and to move the university forward. At the same time, we are aggressively seeking new revenue sources. This summer, we will be renting out rooms in our residence halls to summer interns, both here and in New York City. This will let us fill those spaces when camps are not in session and we will bring in more money than in the past. The new initiatives in online and continuing education will also bring in more revenue. So will our new event spaces, which will be more desirable for outside rentals in periods when the school isn't in session. And finally, we are redoubling our efforts on fundraising. We've also ha always had some very generous alumni, people whose names you recognize from across the campuses, like Ivan Seidenberg and Joe Ionello. But overall, we need to improve alumni engagement. I've met with thousands of alumni since I've been here, all across this country and all across the world. I've enjoyed learning their PACE stories and helping reconnect them to the university. We are building on these relationships. We are underlying the importance of paying it forward to make sure that the next generation gets the opportunities our alumni had when they were at PACE. To the faculty, you can play a big role in this because many alumni are motivated to give back because of their connection with the faculty member while they were here. We have big plans. We are working hard to create opportunities for alumni to support our students. This year, we have raised significant amounts from trustees, alumni, and friends to support scholarships and endowments. We currently have applications pending for millions of dollars worth of new grants. To our alumni and friends, please get involved, give back. We welcome and encourage your support, whatever form and whatever level is right for you. What PACE does makes an enormous difference to our students, to our community, to our country, to our world. We anchor our communities in Westchester and New York City. Our new spaces help us do that even better. Our faculty win significant grants and awards. Our students work hard and inspire me every day. Our alumni change the world. I think of inspiring PACE grads like State Senate leader Andrea Stewart Cousins and Latino U College Access founder Shirley Acevedo Bontempo. People want to be part of us. They want to be part of PACE University. For this school year, we enrolled more new students than we had planned. For the 1920 school year, undergraduate and graduate admissions are trending up. 
Our first admitted student event for the new cycle happened last week, and we hosted a record number of potential students, up 25 from last year. We are currently wrapping up our once every 10 years middle states accreditation process. This moment puts us at an inflection point. It's an ideal time to look ahead at our next decade and our next 100 years. We will be starting a new community-wide goal-setting process after Middle States wraps up. What I'm describing today is a blueprint for where PACE needs to go tomorrow, next week, over the next several years. Everyone here today, students, faculty, and staff, you all work hard. You are all facing change, and you are all adapting. I know how much you do, and I appreciate it. Thank you. We do what we do because our work changes lives. I hear that from alumni I meet. I hear that from faculty and staff. I hear that from our students. We give people opportunities that they would not have without us. An example of that is a Lubin student here in Pleasantville who will graduate in May, and I believe he's here. James Hickey lost both parents before he graduated from high school. Then he lost their home to foreclosure. He lived at one friend's house, then another. He knew he wanted to go to college, and so he worked hard and earned money. He started at Westchester Community College, and then he transferred to Pace. He is a full-time student while working two other jobs. He has a 4.0 GPA. He started a fantasy investment club. He already has a job offer from one investment bank, but he hasn't accepted it yet because he has made it to two second round interviews with other top firms. I am so proud of Jay. I am so proud of all our students. I am proud of the work we do here. Pace will be here, going strong for another 100 years and beyond. We will face the challenges confronting this wonderful institution and all of higher education. We are in good shape. All the ingredients are in place. We have a three-year plan for the future. We have talented, ambitious students. We have dedicated, inspiring faculty and staff. We are crucial parts of a dynamic community. And we have a compelling mission to transform lives through education. We do have hard work ahead of us. We will succeed together. We are on the path. We are one strong pace. Let's go.